Here we are again. It's the Buffs Insider, a weekly podcast. You know, a 10-win season two years ago, dropped back to five last year. I think every player the last few days that I've talked to in some form or fashion has made reference to a closeness, more family-oriented, tighter bond, that kind of thing. And I get the sense that's what this team maybe felt it was missing in 2017 that it had in 2016. Defensively, are the Buffs better this season than last year? I like this defense a lot better. I think this, I think this defense has a chance to be uh, a little bit of a surprise to people. You know what time it is. Come on, man. High fives increase productivity. Hey, you wish your coach had the swag and a, and a spirit like me. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's go. I'm Quan Drake, defensive line coach, University of Colorado from New Orleans, Louisiana. Over the last few years, they've had different staff members, myself, you know, just adding different guys and different personalities. Sometimes it changes the recipe a little bit. There you go, good job. Next two up, let's go. Hey, make sure we're knocking it back. Knock it back, reaching down. Let's go. The one thing that everyone uh, requested was energy. Bop, 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 bop. Coach Drake, <laughs> he has a lot of energy. I think he's a great coach, very enthusiastic, not just with us, but he motivates the whole team. Good job! Get up! Woo! That was good stuff right That's picture perfect. So talking to like older players and stuff, they, uh, they're all saying that our bond together and our connection has been a major difference. Knowing that they can trust the person beside them with the linebackers and stuff, like our connection. So we all just kind of support each other and have faith that we're going to get what we need to get done. Trail squad. Lead us! Davion, we uh we came in together, so like he was one of the first few people that I got to meet on the field. That man is fast. <laughs> uh, Davion, man, he's just so fast. I mean, he runs track here at CU, so we knew he was fast. And then we kind of saw him put the pads on, and we were like, oh man, this dude kid is moving out here. He is explosive as it gets for an outside backer. You don't see many guys that can close the way that Davion can close on people. He's a tough kid that can absolutely run. He can pass rush, he can cover, he can pursue. Uh, he just got a passion to play the game. Woo! When you see guys that, that go through different circumstances and, and tough times, and you see them finally overcome whatever handicap or whatever background they come from, and you see those guys finally put everything together, and then they find that, that moment where they finally get everything that they've worked for. It excites me, it gets me going a little bit. There is no story developing that to me is more intriguing, I think just from the overcoming aspect. Davion Taylor. You know, the really interesting thing about this kid is, is he did not play high school football because he could not play on Friday nights. My name is Davion Taylor. I'm an outside linebacker, and I'm from Magnolia, Mississippi. As soon as I came out here, I was homesick. I haven't seen my mom in like four months at, the, like, at this time, so like just... <sighs> she, she always wanted me to get away from home uh, anyways because ain't nothing uh, down there for me besides just violence and all the other things that I could just end up in jail. I know she wanna watch every game, but it's just, she just support me from, from down there in Mississippi. Magnolia is a small town, like I would say like 2,000 people. Everybody knows mostly everybody. So I used to walk to school every day. Growing up was like, um, it was stressful. Um, not having a father in my life was pretty hard. But I, my mother uh, I always kept us in church, so like I had God in my life. So we started watching football because my brother played his seventh grade year. So like when he started playing, that's when I started to love the game. I just I started practicing with them every day. I was the best practice player. The way that I helped them, I was like, I'm, since I'm the best one on the team, I could just go everywhere. I could play every position, and I could just give them a look at what they're gonna have in the, like on Friday night, and that's what I did. Davion is a, is a great kid. He's from Mississippi. Because of his religious beliefs, he and his family celebrate the Sabbath, meaning they couldn't really do any activities from Friday night at sundown until Saturday night at sundown. 
So high school football they usually play their games on Friday night. I mean, here's a kid who practiced with the team his whole senior year, so he's putting the work in every day after school, and then come Friday, he can't be with the team, and that, that had to be really hard for him. I knew Friday nights, I was like, this is game day, and like, now I have to go home, I have to walk home, and like, now I have to like, just sit at, in the house and just try to focus on God and I try to focus on football. But it was hard for me because like, I loved football, and I knew I could have I been a big help to the team. When the stunts started going down, I just started walking home by myself. And then people just look at me like, people were saying like, you're not playing today? They knew I was playing, playing but like, and when people, when people used to ask me that, it used to make me sad because they didn't know how it affected me on the inside. Every coach I always called my mother, and I, my mom was like, no, 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 no. But my senior year, my coach called my mom. On Tuesday, I don't know what this coach said to my mother. At that time, the sun was sitting like around 8, 7.30, and so he called my mother, and like, like, like I said, I don't know what he said to my mother, and I was like, okay, he can do it this time. Well, uh, I only got to play in one high school football game in my whole life. And, uh, and I, when I made a film, I had, when I made plays, I had put it together in this uh, little bit of, bit of film. Like, this is my interception. The first and only interception of my high, high school career. The referee got in my way. I was one step on away from a touchdown. When I sent, sent it out, I explained, like, my uh, religion. I tried to explain, like, why I couldn't play. And but I never got an email back. I guess people just looked over, like, he only had, like, one high school game. Like, what can he prove? No, no email backs, no letters, nothing. I was very disappointed because I was, I was like, I, I just need a chance to prove myself, and nobody never gave it to me. I really just gave up at that time. I was like, no, I'm gonna go to college, and just whatever happens, happens. And then like one of my coaches called me in his office. He was like, a home call. He was like, they're looking for some players. Uh, do you want to go try out this week? So I was like, okay, this is my shot. Next is my freshman year highlights from Kahoma Community College. And these were like all the big plays I made. Yeah, as I started playing the games, I started getting better. I was a starter at this game. How it started with our relationship with Davion is just like most recruiting stories. Uh, stopped by Kahoma Junior College, met with their recruiting coordinator and head coach. They went through their list of players, and at kind of at the end, they said, hey, we have one more that you need to take a look at. Well, he's 6'2", 225, and he also runs track for us, and he ran a 10'6", 100 meters. Once you got to meet Davion, you figured that he was a different, a special individual. When coach said, go ahead and offer him, uh, made the call to Davion, Davion, you could just tell, was excited. In my head, I was like, offer me, like, <laughs> why? Like, I don't, I don't think I'm that good just yet. He was like, we believe in you. We believe you want to be the best. We want you here. I, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm coming. I committed on the spot. Davion committed to us right before his last year at Kahoma. What was difficult was hanging on to him all the way through because of the year he had. And sophomore season, I just did. Like, I had a phenomenal season. I had ended up being the number one uh, outside, recru outside linebacker recruit in the nation. And like, I had like over 15 plus offers we offered him, he loved us, he committed, and then you name them, they offered him because he ended up being like ranked the number one or number two outside linebacker in, <laughs> in America. What made me stay committed, because I was like, Colorado was the first to offer me and the first to believe in me, so I was like, I have to stay committed to them just like they stayed committed with me. Hi everybody and welcome to Boulder. Let's talk about the Buffs to start things off. Are they better than people thought? I think they are. I think folks did not uh, understand the impact changes on the coaching staff without nor the player development during the offseason. It's now pump fake. Lost it. Picked up. Touchdown. Devon Taylor. That's Devon the Taylor, the five. So, so Jamalbo. He's gobbled up. Davion Taylor. The oh my goodness. Davion Taylor comes flying through with a sack. He's just a phenomenal young man, and he's doing great here, and he just loves it. He's not only told people his dreams, he showed people his dreams. I feel like I'm still underestimated, and I just want to prove that I can compete on this level and be the best, no matter my past. The Drive. Shot with Canon EOS cameras and lenses. Coming this season on The Drive. We go behind the scenes of every football program in the Pac-12. It's about smashing someone in the face every single play. To tell the most compelling stories of the players and coaches in the Conference of Champions. 
For the most in-depth access with your team, watch The Drive on Pac-12 Network.